Good morning, Passion Church. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. <laughs> Woo, I got one with me. All right. How are we this morning? Other than cold and, you know. Well, we are down in numbers a little bit, but we have a lot of people traveling out of town from sickness. But you know what? You're here, and most importantly, our Lord is here. So let's stand this morning. Where two or three are gathered, and there's definitely more than two or three. He is in our midst. So let's just seek him right now. Let's thank him for this day. Lord, we look to you right now, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that you are in our midst. God, you have walked with us throughout our week. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in our lives. We thank you for your peace, your healing, your protection. God, we pray over that for all those that are not feeling well. For Pastor Heather, Lord, that you continue to raise her up. Bring that complete healing. We thank you, Lord, that everything, that the surgery was successful and went well. We praise you for that, Lord. And now anticipate and are excited for her quick healing. Pray for all those that are traveling, Lord, for Beth and all of her family from the funeral, traveling from North Carolina, that you cover them as they're traveling right now, Lord. Keep them safe. Lord, I thank you for each person that's here. God, we've come with hearts expectant for breakthroughs, for deliverances, for salvation, Lord God. We trust you and we thank you. You are worthy of all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'll praise your name. I'll praise your name. You are Alpha and Omega. Yes, you're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever.
this morning, God. We magnify you in this house today, God. I'm believing for breakthrough upon breakthrough in this house this morning. Glory to God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be worshipped. Hallelujah. God, when we don't know what else to say, all we can say is hallelujah. The highest praise that we can give you this morning. I indeed cry out, hallelujah, you've been so good to us this morning, God. God, we feel your presence in this house. God, I thank you for your presence today, God. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. There is peace that passes all understanding. In your presence, there is deliverance. In your presence, there is salvation. In your presence, there is healing right now in the name of Jesus. Those that need healed from addictions, Lord. Right now, I believe in God for a healing to take place in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, we cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty this morning. And we give you praise today. We give you honor, we give you glory in Jesus' name. Put your hands together and bless them one more time in this house this morning. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to Passion Church this morning. As Michael said, we're down in numbers, but we're two or three together. You're here, he's here, that's all that matters. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And God is able to reach down and touch each and every one of us under the sound of my voice this morning. And I'm believing for a breakthrough upon breakthrough. I'm believing for God encounters today. Hallelujah. Any first time guests with us this morning? First time with us at Passion Church? I believe we're all family. All right. All is well. God bless you. Thank you so much for all your prayers this week for my wife who, uh, Went under the knife and looked at the exterior like five times in the gut. I'm like, wow, my God. And uh, but she is she is doing better. She's resting, uh, still in pain, and uh, we're babying her and taking good care of her like you all asked me to. But I'm doing my best. Thank you for those that are feeding us because that's the most important thing for my boys. Who's got us a meal tonight? <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you that people can cook other than me. I think they were getting scared when they, if I said, look, it's all good. we got it taken care of. People are going to bless us with food. Trust me, you'll be fine. <laughs> Don't worry about mom who, you know, can barely walk. Just as long as we get food, we're good. Boys, let me tell you. All right, but God is so good and God is so faithful. God is so faithful. Let's shake hands with two or three people. Let them know how awesome it is to have a Passion Church this morning.
Good morning, everyone. You're asleep on me this morning, so we're going to put you to work. On the count of three, I want everybody to say praise the Lord as loud as you can. One, two, three. You can do better than that. On the count of three, one, two, three. Praise the Lord. There you go. There you go. Okay, they've asked me to come and pray for the, over the tithes and the offering this morning. So I will put on my cheaters and we'll read a little bit of scripture first. I'm going to read this morning from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We'll begin in verse 6. Verse 6 says, But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, nothing grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Think about that. Let me read that again, because that's for every one of us. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Verse 9, as it is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. And then in 10, now he that ministereth seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So the bottom line is God blesses us as we bless him. But it also indicates that if we don't bless him, He's still there to bless us. We give our gifts on a weekly basis. God gives us his gift with every breath we take. We have so much to be thankful for. There's no one in this room that has a right to complain. And I've lived long enough that I can make that statement without any hesitation at all. Let me just share very briefly. When I was a young person and growing up, I was not raised in a Christian home. Matter of fact, we didn't even go to church. I think one time I remember I ever went to church on an Easter Sunday. And it's sad, but it's the, it's the truth. That's the way it was. So I wasn't raised in a Christian home. But I was raised in a household and in a generation that believed beyond the shadow of any doubt that if you work hard and you apply yourself, you can make something of yourself. And frankly, I still believe that today. But I was born into that kind of a generation. And I also had an attitude, because we were not church folk, that the money that you earned, you used wisely. So when I got saved at the age of 31, I was pretty much set in my ways, pretty much had the attitude of how I was going to be the rest of my life, forged into this mind of mine. And I heard a preacher say that we were commanded by God to give 10%. And I looked at him and I thought, what? I work hard for this money, buddy. Giving you 10%, that doesn't flow too good with me. I'm just being honest with you. I'm being real with you this morning. And again, I wasn't raised in church, so I didn't know. But the more I heard it, the more I became interested in finding out, wait a minute, there's got to be something to this. 
because I have a father-in-law that raised eight children and I never knew how he got by with it because they were kids that loved to eat and yet they would still go on vacations and do things and I would sit back and just say dad how in the world are you getting by with this I know what you're making I know you work hard but you're not a rich man but yet you live very very well and comfortable and I realized that it was God's grace. It was God rewarding him in kind for being an obedient servant. And that's why this scripture this morning was important to me for many, many years and still is today. Because I learned. When I first heard it, I didn't agree with it. But I learned that God's word is absolutely absolute, and it's true. God blesses a cheerful giver. And when we are obedient to his word, and his word does tell us to tithe, when we're obedient to that, God is so gracious to us. And I'm thankful that we serve that kind of God this morning. So I'm standing up here not telling you. I'm just sharing with you what God showed me over the years and that I have always found to be true. He's never let me down, and he won't you either because he's not a respecter of persons. Will you stand with me this morning as we pray over the offering? Father, I am truly thankful this morning for your grace and for your mercy. I am thankful, Lord, for the seeds that you've planted in my heart and in my mind. And I'm grateful, Lord, that not only have you told us in your word, but you've shown us on a daily basis how true it is. So, Lord, this morning I ask and pray that you touch the hearts of every one of us that we will give accordingly and that we will be in a mindset and prepared to receive the blessings that you have for each and every one of us. I pray that you will watch over us throughout this new week. I pray that you will keep us all safe. I pray that you will continue to bless and that you'll bring us back at the next appointed time. We love you this morning and we thank you for all of your blessings. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I want to encourage you. This first song is basically say, Jesus, I love you. And anybody in this room that has been a child of the Most High for more than one minute, I hope that you can say, Jesus, I love you. And if you don't know the Lord and that doesn't comfortable, I pray that today is the day that you learn what that means. That each one of us in this place has a Savior that loves us, and that we can look at him and say, I love you. Jesus, I love you. In your own words, take a moment and just worship the Lord and say, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You're my Savior. You're my life, Lord, my breath, my everything. I love you, Lord. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you.
anyone in this place that needs his peace, you are in the right place. His peace is overwhelming. Let it overwhelm you this morning. Lord, we thank you for your peace. Church, call out to him. There is not one thing that you're walking through that you're facing that he cannot give you peace. He cannot give you direction. And he cannot give you deliverance and healing and victory. There is nothing too difficult for our Lord. Press into him. We've been praying for breakthrough. We're fasting. We're seeking the Lord. And this is our time to come together as the body of Christ. Celebrate him. Celebrate what he's doing. I want to sit at your feet. Drink from the cup in your hand. Lay back against you and breathe and feel your heart beat. This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace, it's overwhelming. I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand. Lay back against you and breathe and feel your heart beat. This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace, it's overwhelming. I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand. Lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Than you, Lord. Nobody greater, nobody greater, right. nobody greater than you. There's nobody greater than you, Lord. 
report comes back and it's not what we want it to be we can sing how great is our God when we can't sleep at night when our minds going crazy we can still sing how great is our God when our kids are not saved and we're strung out on crack cocaine on heroin on meth on drugs we can still cry out how great is our God When our marriage is shaky, when, when our spouse is, is threatening to leave us, we can still cry out, how great is our God. He is great and greatly to be praised. Because it's through our praise that will bring our breakthrough. It's through our crying out to God with expectation when he will hear, upon, he will hear our cry and he will respond and he will answer us. When we cry out in desperation, you don't know where else to turn. You've tried everything else. You've called all the counselors. You've called your pastor. You've called the deacons. When you don't know where else to turn, you can cry out and say, God, I need you to come through for me. I've used all my other resources, but I still stand and declare how great is my God. No matter what hell you're going through today, he still deserves our praise. He still deserves our worship. He is still great and greatly to be praised. Come on, somebody, if you believe that this morning, if he's been good to you this morning, give him praise. If he hasn't been good to you, just praise him anyway because it's coming, honey. It's on its way. Come on, sing that one more time, Michael. Come How on. great it's our God. is our God. Oh, sing with me. How Come on, cry out. Is our God. And oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Yes, yeah. Lord. How great are you, Lord? How great is our God. Oh, sing with me. How great. praise is a declaration of how much you love him this morning. Come on, is that, all, is that all you love him this morning? Come on and give him praise. Yes, hallelujah. I declare the works of God in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you today. God, I thank you for what you're about to do in this place. God, I feel you in this house. God, I feel your presence in this place. 
My God, Holy Ghost, to have your way today. Fill us to overflow this morning, God. Holy Spirit, anoint me from on high to preach your word with passion, with unction this morning, God. That no one under the sound of my voice will leave the same way they came in. They didn't come to play church. They didn't come to have church. They come to be the church. They come to be changed and transformed by the power and the glory of God this morning. God, have your way today. God, change us from glory to glory. Change us from the inside out, God. God, let the bondage fall off every person under the sound of my voice, God. Let tradition and religion fall off of your people today, right now, in the name of Jesus. God, let lukewarmness fall right now off your people. Let those that are lethargic, God, that are just used to coming to church just to come to church, let them leave here on fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost right now. Pour it out upon us today, God. God, we want an encounter with you today. We want an encounter with you today. We've come to get your attention. In Jesus' name. You may be seated this morning. I've come to preach to you this morning on the subject a climb, a crawl, and a shout. This morning, I would like to talk to you about getting God's attention. Because when I come to church, I don't come to put on a show. I don't come here just to see who's here and who's not here. I don't come here just to see how many new people are here or how many people will say that that was a good sermon, Pastor, or that was, that was some good worship. No, I come here every Sunday because I need and I want to get God's attention. I come here because I know that if I get God's attention, miracles will fall upon me and my house. Are you with me this morning? I'm preaching already. This plane has taken off at 100 mile an hour. I ain't trying to get it off the ground this morning. It's already, it's already in the air. Because I need God's attention because this is about heaven and this is about hell. This is real. This is not a game. This is about a man who came from heaven to earth to take upon our sins upon his shoulders and die a brutal death, conquer death, hell, and the grave, so that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Look at your neighbor and tell him he's talking about you. You are a whosoever. Ah, Y'all better wake up this morning. Because I need a daily encounter with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I don't need a Sunday encounter. I don't need a Sunday morning worship encounter. I need a daily encounter with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is my Savior. He is my righteousness. He is my deliverer. He is my way maker. He is who and what I breathe every breath because he has given that to me. He deserves my worship every day I wake up. He deserves my praise. Amen? Don't save your best praise for Sunday morning. Somebody's best praise needs to be on a Tuesday evening when all hell is breaking loose in your house. That's when you need to go into praise. Mm. I'm preaching better than your shout, but it's all right. Did anybody in this house come to get God's attention this morning? Did anybody in this house come to get God's attention this morning? Hallelujah. See, in the natural, when you and I are trying to get someone's attention, what are some ways that we do that? We call their name. Tanner, Blade, Rich. We call their name to get their attention. Sometimes we, we wave at them. Bobby, we wave at them. <laughs> Todd, <laughs> you knew I was coming at you. <laughs> we can go up to them to get their attention, Matt, and we can, we can tap them on their shoulder. We can push them. We can elbow them. We can, hug on, we can hug on them. We touch, we feel, we try to get their attention. Or if you have teenagers, you can text them when they're in the same room with you <laughs> so they can look up because they know they're trying to get their attention. When they got the headphones on and they're playing their games and their devices, 
sometimes I, my, my, son, my kids would be on the, at, the, at the table or the other side of the room, and I just, or downstairs, I just, oh, what? <laughs> but today I would like to look at a few people who got God's attention and the way they did it. Zacchaeus, the one with the issue of blood, and the blind men. First of all, the climb. Luke 19, 1 through 6. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him. Since Jesus was coming that way, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. See, tax collectors were indeed absolutely uh, uh, despised in Judaism, tax collectors and, and prostitutes. That is, Zacchaeus wasn't just any old tax collector. He was the chief tax collector. He was responsible for his own deceitfulness and that of others. He was uh, a powerful symbol of the injustice and harsh treatment out to the Jewish people. His wealth just made it worse, rich, rich because of his collaboration with the powers of occupation and, and repression, but mercifully, his fellow Jews might have thought, or at least he wasn't physically impressive because he was short. Uh, no offense to short people in the house this morning. His money didn't get any favors in, the, in this context. He couldn't breeze through the crowd and expect his importance and wealth to get him in an audience with Jesus. Um, if you're rich and powerful, you're pretty much guaranteed attention from our religious leaders. Um, if you're poor or an outsider, you're unlikely to get the time of day. Anyway, back to the story. He has to do something silly and undignified to get to see Jesus. He climbs a tree. Jesus sees him. Jesus really sees him for who he is. And he's known inside and out. And Jesus accepts. He didn't say, get right first and then I'll come to visit your house. He invited himself home and was welcomed by Zacchaeus into his house. And while they're there, Zacchaeus promises to make right what wrongs he's done. And Jesus declares Zacchaeus' new state. See, when he's saved, restored, and no longer uh, lost. See, when we have an encounter with Jesus, some things can't stay the same. When you have an encounter with Jesus, with the Most High, things in your life have got to go. Zacchaeus was willing to climb up a tree to get a touch from God. He wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to really see Jesus Christ. So he's willing to literally go out on a limb. I came to tell you this one. If you're serious about seeing Jesus and willing to climb a limb, if you're really that serious, go somewhere you've never been. Do something you never did. Jesus will then notice you, come, and he will change your life for eternity. Amen? See, sometimes in order to see Jesus, we got to go higher. We got to elevate ourselves. Go above what we see. Go above what we hear. Climb one more rung. Climb one more fear. Climb one more bad report. Climb one more bad relationship. If you stay where you're at, Zacchaeus, you will never be able to see the man you need to meet. Don't stay where you're at, church. Continue to climb a little higher this year. Continue to go to that next level this year. That's the climb. Let me talk about the crawl in Luke 8, 43 through 48. And a woman who was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone here touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. And then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. See, according to the Jewish ideas of the time, if this woman touched anyone, she imparted her uncleanness to them. An uncleanness that would not allow them to take part in any aspect of Israel's worship. Jesus recognized the touch of this woman. When I read this, I had to ask myself, why is it that everyone else was crowding around him and he didn't say, someone touched me? But the moment that woman touched him, he said, wait a minute, someone touched me. I know this because I felt the power 
leave my body. Somebody touched me, my God. When I worship him, I want him to respond. Somebody's touched me. When I give him praise, I want him to respond. Somebody, Caitlin, has just touched me. I want to know when I cry out to God in the middle of the night, I want him to know that somebody has touched him. I came to tell you this morning, if we cry out with expectancy, because that's what got him to respond. It was the expectancy of her touch is why he responded to her touch. God recognizes the touch, Dean, of expectation. That's why I tell you every Sunday morning, we've got to come here expecting to receive from the Lord. If you don't come expecting, just stay in bed. You can get more sleep. You can get more beauty sleep. But if you don't come to God expecting anything, then you're taking up my time and his time. I came to tell you, we need to come to church expecting healing, expecting miracles, expecting deliverance, expecting people to fill the Holy Ghost. Every time we enter his gates with thanksgiving, we need to come with a spirit of expectation. Come on and give him praise in this house this morning. I didn't come to look at God and say, to touch God and say, look what I can do. I didn't come to touch God and leave the same way I came here. The Lord told me this year was going to be a year when we see more people have a true encounter with the Most High God. And how are we going to do that? If we don't come with an expectation every Sunday morning to see him high and lifted up, to see him uh, to touch every person into the sound of our voice, how can we leave the same way we came in if we don't expect to leave the same way we came in? Mm. If I know that God recognizes expectation, then I'm coming to him and I'm expecting my healing. If I come to somebody and I know that you'll respond by me simply asking, Dean, I need to borrow 20 bucks from you. And if I come to you expecting, because I know Dean has a reputation, that when people come to him and ask him for money, that he responds by giving them money. So if I come, I'm just, I'm just kidding. They're going to they gonna swore, Dean, I need 20 bucks today. <laughs> I'm just joking. But if I knew that he had a reputation of doing something because you asked him, why would I go not believing that he was going to give it to me? I'm going to come to Dean and say, I need 20 bucks, and I'm going to hand out my, my hand because I know he's about to give it to me. Why do we come to church if we know God responds with expectation? Why do we come to church with our hands not out, saying, God, I come with expectation. I come to receive my healing. But if you come with your hands folded, we're expected to leave with that same sickness because you didn't come with your hands out ready to receive from God. Now, y'all don't have to shout me down. Y'all know I'm preaching truth. I come expecting God to perform miracles. I come expecting God to be Jehovah Jireh because that's who he is. I came expecting God to be El Shaddai because that's who he is. I came expecting God to be El Elohim because that's who he says he is. I expect God to be the I am that I am because that's who he says he is. Glory to God. I'm expecting provision. I'm expecting peace because that's who he says he is. Maybe... Maybe this crowd was just hanging out with Jesus because they wanted to feel cool. And they were the in crowd because that's who people that hung around Jesus, that's who they were. They were the it crowd. Look at me, I get to hang out with Jesus. And I, I'm feeling cool. I, hey, look at me on this Sunday afternoon at Grinders hanging out with my peeps because I just came to hang out with Jesus. I just came from hanging out with him. And I, we had a great old time. It was fun. People smiled. They shook my hand. I hugged a few, a few necks. I, I looked at some babies. And I smiled at some folks. I just hung out with Jesus this morning. And I get to share about that today. <laughs> Going through the motions. Saying the right things. Going through their traditions. Until someone stepped on the scene who was expecting a touch. From Jesus. I know we might look at this crowd funny, but how many times have you and I come to church and put on our church emotions? Uh, our church motions. Glory to God. Woo! Yeah!
<laughs> we put on our Christian language. Glory, hallelujah, mighty rich pastor, amen somebody. Glory to God, isn't he good to you? He good to me all the time. We put on our Christian, we put on our weekend traditions. But today I came to ask you, is there anybody in the building this morning that came expecting a touch from God and you don't want to leave the same way you came in? You refuse to leave these doors with the same back pain that you came in with. You refuse to leave these doors with that same shaky marriage. You refuse to leave this door, these doors with that same anxiety that you walked in here with. You refuse to leave these doors with that same stronghold that's been gripping you around the neck all week and you refuse to leave here the same way you came. Is anybody in the building that refuses to leave the the same way you came here this morning. Somebody shout, yes! <laughs> Hallelujah! She had to fight through the crowd. It's amazing how many times in the Bible we see that someone had to fight through the crowd to get a touch from God. This is the year of breakthrough. But sometimes we would have to be the ones doing the breaking through in order to receive what God has for us. Zacchaeus had to fight the crowd. This woman had to fight the crowd. The blind men had to fight the crowd. Believe it or not, you and I are going to have to fight the crowd. We want our breakthrough and our healing this morning. The crowd can not only be a group of people trying to pull you down. The crowd can be doubt. The crowd can be fear. The crowd can be insecurities the crowd can be our past well how can I get a breakthrough and, and go to that altar because people know what I've done last year they know where I came from they know my addictions they know my hang-ups they know all my relationships that had not been glorifying God they know who I used to be how can I get a breakthrough that is the crowd that you need to fight through because God will take your past and he will deliver you from your past and give you a new future that's the God that I serve his grace is sufficient every day, and His mercies are new every morning. The crowd could be people hating on you. I don't care who just Snapchat you this morning that you're ugly. I don't care. My Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are made an image of God. The crowd can be those stuck in traditions. It's 11.34. Why isn't church over yet? We started at 10.30. It's supposed to be an hour long. I didn't come to church to be here long longer than 60 minutes. I rebuke traditions in the name of Jesus. We will leave when God says it's time to leave. Mm. <laughs> Somebody said, well, I'm at the wrong church. <laughs> oh, God help me. Just like this woman had to make her way through the crowd. I want to know if there's anybody in the house this morning that wants your touch so bad you're willing to fight through the crowd. Fight through depression. Fight through anxiety. Fight through fear. Fight through people. Because you know that if you do not touch Jesus, this could be your last chance to get a hold of the master for you. I need to get a hold of Jesus. Somebody say amen. It's amazing how you and I can let the crowd affect what we do, whether good or bad, we let the crowd affect, listen, it's like whenever I take my boys to a, to a sporting event, and we're there, and we go, and we, they want an autograph, so they get embarrassed by their dad until they get an autograph, because I don't care if my boys want something, I'm going to fight through the crowd, listen, I don't push people over the side of the railings, I've never killed anybody trying to get an autograph, I <laughs> But I've, I've pushed some folks nicely in Jesus' name. <laughs> I've, helped, I've just made my way through to the crowd a little bit and just pushed some people aside to get some autographs. Because my sons want an autograph. So I'm willing to fight through the stuff and people screaming and yelling, and they've all gotten autographs. Because dad was willing to fight through a crowd to make sure they got it. 
when Blaine was turned 13, I had the opportunity and the, and the privilege to take him to a Dallas Cowboy game in Cincinnati. This was for his 13th birthday. Well, he wanted to see a game, but I wanted him to remember, remember that moment forever. So we get down. We got there before the, when the doors were open. We were the first ones in the stadium. We got down there. They were all coming out. I leaned over. I was leaning over the side. I was, I was walking my way down. He'll tell you. He was right there behind me. I yelled down to, to what's his name? See, Brian Carr. He knew, he, he will never forget it. Because I said, hey, it's my son's 13th birthday. Hook him up. I was, I didn't, I didn't care about the crowd. I didn't care if people thought I was nuts. Next thing I know, he, I said, it's his 13th birthday. Hook him up. Next thing I know, he took off his gloves, threw them up to him. The look on my son's face. Because daddy was willing to fight through the crowd and ignore the noise around me to get what my son wanted. And if me being an earthly father will give good gifts to my son, how much more will the heavenly father give to them that diligently seek him? And may I add to them that diligently push through the crowd to get a touch from him. We've got to be willing to push and fight through the crowd and ignore the noise around us. <laughs> I mean, been to Indians games. And they've been throwing, they've been taking that gun and throwing things out and whatever. I mean, I've knocked kids. Oh, God forgive me. I don't want to. That, that didn't sound good. I didn't knock them over, but I just had a longer reach than they did. But see, I, I immediately grabbed the T-shirt and I turn around like, like that wasn't me. <laughs> and I give it to my boys because I'm going to fight through kids that are. Smaller than me. I just sounded, my God, help me, Jesus. I just sound like a bully. God, you know my heart. <laughs> I listened to this story. It's an old short story of a donkey. <laughs> it's fitting. A story that tells about an elderly man who was traveling with a boy and a donkey. As they walked through a village, the man was leading the donkey and the boy was walking behind. The townspeople said the old man was a fool for not riding. So to please them, he climbed up on the animal's back. When they came to the next village, the people said the old man was cruel to let the child walk while he enjoyed the ride. So to please them, he got off and set the boy on the animal's back and continued on his way. In the third village, people accused the child of being lazy for making the old man walk, and, su and the suggestion was made that they both ride. So the man climbed on, and they set off again. In the fourth village, the townspeople were indignant and the cruelty of the to the cruelty of the donkey because he was made to carry two people. The frustrated man was last seen carrying the donkey down the road. <laughs> so today I just stopped by to encourage you, don't let the crowd dictate to you what you do for the Lord. Don't let the people on the sidelines determine how you step up and how you step out for God. It's time to go all in for all that God has for you in 2018. It's time. How many times have you and I been in the presence of God and we, and we leave the same? Because we've, we didn't want to listen to the crowd uh, tell us that, oh, you've been to the altar 15 times since, you know, December. Ignore the crowd. Because if you get someone who is expecting a touch from God, you'll hear my last point, which is a shout. Matthew 20, 29 through 34 says this, as Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside, and when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet, but they shouted all the louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them, what do you want me to do for you, he asked. Lord, they answered, we want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately they received their sight and followed him. See, the crowd told them to be quiet, but they shouted all the louder. Here we go with the crowd again. The crowd told the blind man to be quiet, 
but they shouted all the I have a question for you this morning. What do you and I do when the crowd tells us to shut up? When the crowd tells us to be quiet, do we shut up or do we step up? Son of David, have mercy on us. Son of David, save my kids. Son of David, heal my marriage. Son of David, heal our nation. Son of David, deliver my child. Son of David, open a door for us. Son of David, I need a house. Son of David, I need a building. Son of David, we need some land. I refuse to let the crowd silence my shout. Are you hearing me this morning? See, some people like to act like the crabs in a bucket. If you never heard that saying, it's, it's made famous, called a crab bucket. See, when a single crab is, pulled in, is put into a, a bucket with no lid on it, um, they can and will escape. However, when more than one crab share a bucket, none of them can get out. Because if one crab elevates himself above all, the, others will crab, will, the other crabs will grab it and drag them back in the bucket to share the mutual fate of one another. See, crab bucket syndrome is often used to describe social situations where one person is trying to better themselves and others in the community attempt to pull them back down. See, there's two kinds of people in the world. One's on the ladder climbing and the one's pulling people off the ladder. Which one are you this morning? See, Jesus saw their faith and stood still. Imagine that Jesus stopped and called the blind man. He saw what? He saw their expectancy. And he stopped what he was doing, and he called them. Wow. There's something about crying with expectancy. I come here this morning crying with expectancy for breakthrough for my Passion Church family. I come here this morning crying with expectancy for miracles and signs and wonders to fall in this place every Sunday morning. I come here crying with expectancy that we will see the harvest that God has truly promised us. There's something about crying with expectancy. He asked them, what do you want me to do for you? He knew they were blind, but he still asked them, what do you want me to do for you? See, we need to have a heart-to-heart -heart with ourselves and really ask God, what we really ask ourselves, what do we really want from God? What do we want God to do for us? These men were blind, but God knew what they needed, but he needed to hear from their own mouths. What do you want me to do for you? How many come in here week after week after week, not even knowing what it is you want God to do for you? Know what it is, and then see, sometimes we need to go out and get what God wants to give us. Jesus could have just came and said, you're healed. But he wanted these men to go after what they wanted. He wanted them to go after what they were expecting. Is there anybody here this morning that's wanting to go after what you are expecting this morning? I'm expecting God to do this for me. I'm expecting God to do this for my family. I'm expecting God to do this for my, my business. I'm expecting God to do this for my, for my church. I'm expecting God to do this for my community. What is it that you're expecting God to do for you? Sometimes you've got to go after whatever it is God wants to give you. Are you and I ready to go after whatever it is that you're expecting this morning? Stand all over this place this morning. Because I came here this morning, I'm expecting joy. I'm expecting victory. I'm expecting the promotion. I'm expecting healing. I'm expecting my kids to be, be saved, sanctified, delivered, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm expecting from God. See, here's, here's, here's what I want you to understand this morning. Your celebration is a demonstration of your expectation. Let me say that again. Your celebration is a demonstration of your expectation. If you ain't expecting nothing from God, you're going to give him a golf clap. You know what a golf clap is. It's the ones that put you to sleep on Sunday afternoon. If you ain't expecting nothing from God, you're just going to be on your phone while Pastor Matt's giving the altar call. I'm not even looking out there right now. If you ain't expecting nothing from God, you're just going to... But if you're expecting from God, your celebration, ha, yes, I'm expecting God to save my family. I'm expecting God to deliver my children. I'm expecting God to open the door for us. I'm expecting God to do something great and mighty in this place. I'm expecting God to heal my wife. I'm expecting God to heal my spouse. I'm expecting God to heal my grandmother. I'm expecting God. I'm expecting God. My celebration is a demonstration of my expectation. 
But what are you expecting God to do for you today? What is it that you need God to do for you? There's someone in here this morning that does not have a relationship with Jesus. And you've, you've heard me shout and scream and make a fool of myself for the last 30 minutes. And you're saying, well, you just shut up because I need a relationship with him and I don't know how to do it. He said, call upon me and I will answer thee. It's a simple prayer. It says, God, I am filthy rags. I am a sinner and I need a savior. I don't need a religion. I don't need a tradition. I don't need three points in a poem, but I need a relationship with Jesus Christ. I need him to be Lord of all. If he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. He needs to be Lord of all of my life. If that's you this morning, say, Pastor Matt, I need Jesus. Heaven or hell, it's real. If you don't know Jesus, you're destined for hell. But if you want to know Jesus, let me tell you how to do it. Just pray a simple prayer that we're going to pray here in one second. And when you pray that prayer with your heart, asking Jesus to be your Lord and Savior of your life, he'll write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Eternity will be secured in him because you will have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Every head by every eye closed right now. If there's anyone on the sound of my voice, say, Pastor Matt, that's me. I don't know Jesus. I need him. I was invited here. I've come here. I've been here for a few weeks. And I've heard all this. I've been in his presence. But something's different today. There's something on the inside of me pulling me to make a decision. That's the Holy Spirit. He is convicting you to lay down your life for him. If that's you this morning, you say, I want to know Jesus. I need Jesus Christ as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm tired of playing games. I'm pushing through the crowd today, Pastor Matt. I'm pushing through the noise. I don't care who sees me or who, 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 who's trying to, who talks about me after this day. I'm going all in for Jesus this morning. If that's you this morning, lift your hands. Say, Pastor Matt, it's me. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else in the building? Glory to God. You're not alone today. There's multiple people raising their hand right now. Don't let this be your last moment on this earth, refusing to give Jesus your life. Give it to him today. Hallelujah. 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 I want everyone to repeat this prayer to me, especially those who raised their hand. Pray with your heart this morning. Say, dear God, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Forgive me of all my wrongs, of my past, of my sin come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for dying on a cross for me. I need you to help me to live for you. I want a relationship, not a tradition and not a religion. I love you, Jesus. Thank you again. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and celebrate for three people giving their hearts to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It never gets old. <laughs> yes. Let our celebration be a demonstration of our expectation. Glory, glory, glory. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> How great is our God. How great is our God. Now those three that raised their hand, I don't want to embarrass you, but I want to celebrate with you. I, this is what I call a victory lap. Because we here at Passion Church are family. We are family. <laughs> and I want to encourage you. If someone invited you, if you're sitting next to someone, grab them by the hand and say, come with me, because they will. And not only will they come with you, but there'll be multiple people coming down with you to celebrate and love on you and hug on you and say, we got your back. You can do this. This is the greatest decision you've ever made in your life. I'm talking to you. You know that. I want you to step out of your seat. Join me right here. This, this, this cutout section was designed just for you. 
Come on. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on and celebrate. Come on and celebrate. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to pray for them. <laughs> Don't ever underestimate the power of an invite. They kept inviting family member after family member. There, God's not done. There's more family members that come to Jesus. Don't underestimate the power of inviting your friends and your family to experience the power and the presence of God. I'm going to get down and pray with them. But if there's anybody else on the sound of my voice, says, Pastor Matt, I've come expecting God to do something in my life. I'm not, I refuse to leave here with the same junk that I came in with. I'm leaving here free by the power of God. If that's you this morning, get out of your seat and come down to this altar expecting God to touch you because you're reaching out to touch him this morning. How great is our God. Yes, sing with me. How great. Trembles at his voice, it trembles. 
rejoice one more time in this place before I dismiss. Here's what I want you to do, those, those you three that got saved. There's a sign-up sheet for water baptism. I want you to sign up before you leave. We're waiting on a call back from the Y um, to see if it's going to be the first Sunday in February, which would be Super Bowl Sunday. What better way to celebrate new lives in Christ than Super Sunday? Glory to God. Or it might be the Sunday after that. So make sure you sign up. It's what we do right after church on that Sunday. We go bring a change of clothes. We walk right over to the Y. We have a section of their pool set out for us. And the whole church comes over and celebrates with you. But sign up. Water baptism is just a public uh, acknowledgement of my faith in Christ. I'm burying the old man. And you bury the old man today. And you're raising up new in Jesus. And we want to let the world know. Don't be ashamed of it. Amen. Um, continue to pray for all those traveling today on their way back. Uh, small groups to start up Tuesday. Small group is going strong at Michael Burt's house. Uh, Thursday, young adult. This week, last week, Brian had some uh, responsibility with snow day. Snow days affects more than just the kids. It affects administration, so he had to do some things for his last Thursday. This Thursday, young adult, 18 to 30, please show up at Brian's house. Um, it's how, how do you continue in this? You stay in his word. You get accountability partners. You get amongst other Christians that will pick you up when the enemy's trying to beat you down. This is how we survive. We do church in pews and in rows, but we do life in circles. And we do life in small groups. And our, our seasoned believers, our, our, our devotion and prayer um, uh, small group will begin in February. 
So and we want to do, we're going to continue to help you guys live for Jesus. This is what it's about. This is what it's about. Thank you so much. Dakota, thank you so much for inviting your mother. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is, God is in the business of saving families. <laughs> One family at a time in 2018. Glory, glory, glory. All right, I think I, <laughs> I always look back to my wife to see if I got anything else to say. Michael, do you have anything else to say? <laughs> I think that's it this morning. God bless you. Thank you for being here and continue to invite people to come and experience the power of God. Because that's what we're doing at Passion Church. Continue on your fasting and praying. I'm, I'm praying that everything's going well there. Continue. We've got one more week uh, to continue to stay strong and continue to stay de dedicated and committed to that. As God's going to honor that. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. God, I thank you, Lord, for saving souls. Hallelujah. Three more rescued from the pit of hell this morning, and we give you praise, give you honor, give you glory. God, this is why we do what we do. God, I pray every Sunday and every day people wake up, they give you praise, and they give you uh, uh, just an adoration and a worship with expectation attached to it. That you will touch them every day of their life. God, give us fresh revelation every day of who you are. Of who you are, God. God, let us hunger and thirst for more of you so that we may be filled to overflow. Hallelujah. And we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen.